Hello everyone, in the GTC day two, we are going to be looking at today uh, our second assignment, our scenario number two, which focuses around some of the uh, aspects of the Google Docs that have to do with commenting and being able to send direct comments, as well as inserting um, various aspects of the Googleverse into your document using something called the Explore tool. But what I want to do is, first of all, I'm going to close off a whole bunch of tabs I have open up here. I would like you to join me by going into your Google Classroom, which is right here, um, and click on Classwork, Google Drive folder. This is what we did yesterday. We built all of this. And inside of here, under exam materials, we're going to be looking at and working with this document right here, which is called Google Foo and You. I'm going to open that. Now, when you first look at a Google Docs, the toolbars do look familiar to you. You've used them. Um, if you've done any kind of work, either in Google or in Word, um, what I want to do is take us a little bit deeper into their use so that um, you'll know what's going to be asked of you on the test. As I have said countless times, that's the test right there. So if we can do this, and if we can be comfortable with doing this, then we're going to be fine when it comes to the scenarios on the test. But let's take a quick tour around the whole Google document layout. And then we'll come back and we'll then specifically uh, down into what they what's on the test. So under, let's just go through the menus real fast. File. Under file, you have things that you need to know what they are. So let me just give you an idea. You can go in here and you can create new, and it has templates, which is not that old, but that's been around. Um, drawing, we're going to have to do that if for as far as our um, scenario goes. So we'll be looking at that. Open, you can probably guess what that is. It's open a document. When you open and you open up something that is either a um, Microsoft Word document, it will pull it into the Google Docs as a Google Docs. That's a question on the test, by the way. Uh, make a copy. Why would I make a copy? Well, one of the things we're going to talk about here in a little bit is the ability to comment uh, on work. And so if you want to have a creation of your document so that you can say, okay, this was the original look. Here's the second one, third one, fourth. You can do that with make a copy. Download it exactly what you think it is. You can download it as a Microsoft Word document if you need to, or you can download it as an open document format. Not too many calls for ODF, although uh, Zoho, which is the sort of uh, tool that's used in our folio tech. Um, it is it uses the ODF format for the things that it creates. Rich text format again. Those are the old days of DOS. Uh, PDF. We know what PDFs are. We like PDFs. We use them all the time. Plain text, same thing uh, as um, RTF. A little more stripped out. What what happens when you do these uh, RTFs? RTFs keeps all of the coding so it knows where the paragraphs are, it knows where commas are, it knows where you've sectioned things, it knows the format of things, uh, but it doesn't have anything that specifically is not known by every text editor under the sun. Plain text strips everything out, so it's, it strips out your paragraph calls, it's, it wipes out everything that's on the text. Most of the time plain text is used when you're doing some kind of coding operation. Uh, when you're on the console, as we say. Web pages are exactly what you think it is. It's a web page. Uh, you can create something pretty fancy here. Um, then you can download it in a web page format. In other words, it'll put all the tags and all the HTML in correctly uh, in a zip format style so that you can then upload it into a web page, either in sites or any other kind of web uh, creation tool. Um, that's a pretty powerful one. EPUB. Not around as much as it was originally going to be. Uh, we we're going to be creating everything and then saving it into EPUB because we could then put it into our Kindles 
and our iPads and we could run around. We wouldn't have to have textbooks. We just haul all this stuff around. Uh, it does work. It still works. Um, but I just haven't seen it go anywhere outside of the Apple um, books that, that it tried to, you know, like it tried to do with music. Apple tried to own the EPUB. Um, and of course, Amazon kind of took their place with their Kindle. Email is an attachment. This one's good. So if you create a document and you need to send it out to people as an attachment, you can just click right here. The classic email box pops up. And you can then put in the names, or if you have the names already in your Google, um, into your Google Classroom, they'll show up. You can decide who you want to send it to. Making it available offline. One of the uh, misconceptions about the Google Verse and Chromebooks and the Google whole thing is people think that um, you can't work offline. You have to be uh, in a uh, Wi-Fi environment so you can use your Chromebook. Not true, not true, not true. You can download the apps now to your Chromebook uh, so that you can have your docs and your spreadsheets and your slides and your forms. You can have all that uh, right there for you to use. So uh, making this available offline, basically what it does is it will put a copy of it onto your desktop that you can work on. Then when you get back to being online, it will then automatically upload it to your Google Drive. Kind of neat. Version history. This one's a biggie. This is how you can see what commenting has been going on inside the document. This is the way that you can look at what are kids doing in response to the document you've sent them. Um, you can look at the groups. In other words, if you assign four or five kids a document to work on together, you can then see all the comments that they have created. Um, and you can then see, as you will see here in just a minute, it tells you who did it. So right away, you can see if someone is carrying their weight or they're just slurfing along. I can name the current version like this one. Um, I could say um, D-R-A-F-T. And then I can save that. And then when I go back in here uh, to my version history, I can see the version history and it will tell me, you know, I could see, you don't see anything right now because we haven't commented. So if you were to pull this up and you were to pull up the draft one, you would see that oh, everybody's comments and everybody's names are in here and you can print it. Um, that's kind of cool. That's a really nice way for you to see because one of the powerful things about the Google is the collaboration piece. You know it, you've been collaborating with people using Google Docs all through college probably. So this is how you as a teacher can assign kids to do this kind of work and maintain a record of who's doing what. That's a really nice tool. Rename, you can rename the document, move, you can move the document, move it to trash, get rid of it, publish it directly to the web, you would have to have either a link or you can do an embed code. We'll talk about this when we look at uh, sites. Uh, let's see, what else do we have down here? Um, you can do email collaboration. So in other words, you can invite people in uh, via email to work on this document. Again, simple as that. Um, here's the message. Here would be the people that you could invite in to work on this. Uh, you can do multiple people. It doesn't have to be just one. There's the document details. Here's the language uh, page setup. You know all this in print. Under edit, here's our classic, you know, copy, undo, uh, cut, paste, all that good stuff. Here's the view, how you can look at it. Um, nice equation toolbar for those of you who do math things. Uh, image. Um, let's look at this real fast because it's going to be something that's on the, uh, let's go look at that real fast here. I think it's, are we putting an image in today? Yes, we are. So, but they want us to use the Explorer tool to put the image in. Okay, fine. We'll do that. But I also, it wants us to do something with word art and we'll do that. Um, I can show you how to do that. Oops, excuse me. But you can see you, can, you have all these different tools available to you. 
Um, very straightforward use of them. Uh, you can search the web for a document for an image. Uh, let's take our time with that for a second here. So I'm going to search for images and I'm going to use the Google. Uh, there are other ways of doing this, and I'll show you. So if I type in planets and told it to go, as you can see, it shows me all the different googly searches, and there's you know thousands and thousands. But we want to start teaching kids good practice. So right down here in the lower right, there's a little plus sign. You click that, it'll bring it up full screen so you can see it. And it will then show you at the bottom if this is copyright protected. It says image is labeled for commercial use with modification. Only select images that you have confirmed that you have the license to use. Uh-oh. So this language is a little vague. I will show you a tool uh, in our add-ons over here that will allow you to have just about any thing you want and you don't have to worry about copyright. By the way, I clicked insert and that's why I jumped in there. Okay, let's see. Chart are from spreadsheets, uh, horizontal lines, so you can differentiate different parts of it. Footnote, we're gonna do footnote here in a minute. Uh, special characters, this would be the hexadecimal characters. You probably would never need it. Equation, there you go, math people. And it does superscripts, subscripts, it does parenthetical phrases. It does everything you would need. Headers and footers, we're going to get to that as well. Page numbering, you can tell it to keep track of uh, the number of pages you have, or you can tell it to actually put that page number on there. You can do a break. Um, you can do the break, by the way, are page breaks. Um, People use this as a way of, again, dividing off the parts of a document they might be writing so that you might have the beginning. In other words, you would have your um, uh, question that you're doing research on, and you could have a, a page break, a section break, excuse me, a section break in there that would then list your resources where you've gone and found things. Another section break might be your analysis, your writing. So on. That's what they're for. Link is exactly what you think it is. You could, by the way, you can link from anywhere inside your drive into a document, which is kind of cool. Um, and you can put in links to other things, you know, resources out there. Bookmarks are exactly what you think it is. It would be a place where you can find it. And table of contents. You can create your table of contents and it lets you set it all up right there. Kind of neat. Format, exactly what you think it is. You're used to this. This is nothing new. Um, check down here under page numbers. You can set up different kinds of looks of your pages. Do you want them in a header or a footer? And how do you want it to start? Um, other than that, there's nothing here that you don't already know. You know about paragraph styles. You know about how to align. You know about line spaces. You know all this. Under tools, my goodness, this one saves my butt every single time. So I've got my spelling suggestions turned on. I've got my grammatical suggestions turned on. Um, is it good? Yeah, it's pretty good. The personal dictionary, it uses the Goog. So yeah, it does a really good job of finding things. Word count, kind of important if you want to know how many things you've written so far. If you're working on a 500-word essay, uh, comes in handy. Uh, review suggested edits. We don't have any because nobody's done one, but you'll see in just a minute. Uh, compare documents. This is where I was talking about where you can look at that first draft versus this, this uh, version, and you can see all the different edits, et cetera, that people have made if you're working in that kind of environment. And now we're down to explore. So it wants us to use the explore feature to put something into the document. Let's jump into that right now. And let's see, it says use the Explorer tool to insert an and, that should be an image into the document, and then use Google Drawings to insert a word art into the documents that say Google Foo. All righty. So if I go back to my document here and I use my Explorer tool, and I can come over here and it says search your documents for stuff, I'm going to do. Uh, that planets again and good old grammarly it just it hates being second fiddle 
So we'll do that again. There we go. I'm going to search for planets. Here we go. So I have the ability to do this. Um, I can do it with images. I can do it with web. I can look in my drive. Kind of cool. Now, it's asking us to do an image. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to grab something and throw it in here. And I'll do an insert. And there we go. And I'm going to, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller just because I want to be able to control this thing. And if you'll notice, what does it do when it puts an image in, which is really, really kind of nice, is it will change. It will give you the information you need to know. It will give you the information that you need to know so that you're citing it. Let's do that again. I go to images and if I drag in the picture that I want to use, or if I just hit the plus sign, it puts it in. Now, remember what we talked about. You need to be careful about whether these are images that are allowed. And as you can see, when I click on it down here, it gives me the information that I need to know about where this came from. Isn't that nice? It gives me the site that it came from and I can now copy this link and I can put it in to my document so that I am covered. How about that? Now I've cited where that picture came from. Here's the other cool thing. Explore has. So now I'm going to go to web because I'm looking for resources about what I'm writing. If I'm going to use this as a resource, I have the ability now to determine its use as a citation. I can come up here and I can say, I'm not going to be doing MLA. I'm going to be doing APA because I'm doing education. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on the little quotes. And looky, 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 it puts it down here as a footnote at the bottom. Isn't that nice? That is just too cool for school. It really does make a nice way of working um, and keeping kids, helping kids, I should say, helping kids understand that citation is so, so, so important. You've got to be able to say, this is where I got this from. And, you know, you can make the decisions about, because you can look over here, and you can make the decisions about uh, primary and secondary source. Do you allow Wikipedia? Well, it says right there. There's Wikipedia. So if you don't allow it, you can say to kids, we're not using Wikipedia. I want you to use sources that you think do a better job of finding things. I love, love, love Explore. It's a really powerful tool. Let's keep going down the tools and then we'll come back. Uh, linked objects, you can put things together. Dictionary, you can tell which way you want to, you know, dictionary you want to use. Translate the document. Okay, translating documents is kind of tricky. Um, and I'm going to show you what I mean by that. If I come down here and I highlight what I've written here, and then I come up here to my tools and I translate the document. It's going to ask me to pick the, t the language that I want to translate that to. Boy, there are a lot. So let's go to Spanish and I'll tell it to translate. Now it's using Google Translate to come up with a version of the text that I have just written. And you'll notice 
that what I highlighted is now translated into Spanish and it kept the, the figure, the uh, pictures. I would caution you using this tool to send out disciplinary notices or cause for concern, um, things that have to do with understanding what you've written. Uh, if you're sending out something to a parent and you want them to hear what's going on in class, what your goals for the class are, what I would do is I would make sure that you'd run this by someone in your building who is a ESL person or someone who speaks the language fluently that you're trying to use. Just saying, um, is it perfect? No, it is not perfect. Is it close? Pretty good, pretty good. Now, someone who um, uses Google Docs all the time, if you disagree with me, fine, good. Uh, if they've gotten better at it, excellent. I've just seen where it can get you in trouble. Let's see, where were we? We are now in tools. We were explore while well, we're doing translate document voice typing. Okay, let's look at voice typing. This is another one of those that gets a lot of traction. Everybody pulls it up because it's, it's one of those uh, crowd pleasers. It's not in the scenario, by the way. Uh, so it's not on the test, but let me just show you. And then you can decide whether you see this would be important. So when I turn on voice typing, what it's going to do is where I have my insertion point, the little blinky line down there, where I have my insertion point, if I now click to speak, it's going to record and trans, not translate, transcode my words into text. It works well. Underline. It works well. But I don't know. I, I would definitely use this if I'm trying to get kids engaged in the writing process and they are so, so, so slow with typing uh, that they can use this as a way to get around that. Although I don't want them to get around that. I want them to eventually be able to type at least with two fingers. I type with two fingers. I'm not a touch typist. But using my two fingers, I type fast enough that I could have a job in Jefferson County Public Schools uh, as someone who has to enter data because I can type at 32 words a minute. That was always my sort of, you know, bottom line when I was in charge of all this in Jefferson County is I would say to my elementary classroom teachers, if you can get your fifth graders up to at least 30 words a minute, wow, that would be fabulous. Well, let's see how it works. I am now going to write by talking to my Google Docs underline. You see, it didn't underline it. It just did it. Now, if I just try to talk like I normally would, it's going to get a lot of it, but it's not going to get everything. And I can just keep right on talking this way and let's see how much of it it gets. So I'm going to stop. So let's look. I'm going to write by talking to my Google Docs. It did catch underline. I was trying to get it to underline. He said it didn't underline it. Just He just did it now. If I just try to talk to like I normally would, it's going to get a lot of it, but it's not going to get everything, and I can just keep talking right, I can just keep right on talking this way. Let's see how much of it gets. Not too shabby. Okay. You decide. Is it on the test? No. It's not baked enough for the test. Uh, let's see, script editor, you don't need to worry about it. That's if you're doing HTML stuff. Uh, preferences, this is where you can set things up uh, for you. Um, accessibility settings, this is where I would show accessibility settings, especially to my students in my classroom who need it, uh, AKA me, to show them how that they can make things bigger or if they need it to, they can hear it read to them the documents that you have created. Let's keep going here. Add-ons. Uh, these are kind of cool. The problem with add-ons are, uh, in most school districts, the add-ons are mitigated and controlled by someone at central office, a, the Google administrator. So you may or may not have the ability to add add-ons. Uh, one of my favorite, and again, this is nothing else, but I'm talking to you as someone, uh, educator to educator. 
I would put my orange um, slice teacher rubric creator on my, uh, if I'm carrying around a Chromebook for school or if I'm just using Google Docs in school uh, at university, man, I'd add this puppy in here because when you have to create that rubric for a class you're in, this is about the easiest tool you'll ever use. Uh, I know there's a lot of use out there of something called Ruby Star. I used to teach people how to use Ruby Star all the time. I like this one much better. It is so slick and it's easy to use. Um, down here, these are two tools that I use. This is Pixaway, uh, has free images, so you don't have to worry about copyright with them. The one above it, Pictures and Emojis, is basically, I need to get rid of it because it, it's a cost. It'll try to It'll give you just a tiny bit, and then it'll try to charge you for them. Translate is another translate uh, tool. Word cloud generator is kind of cool. You can dump a whole bunch of words into it, and it'll generate a word cloud. There you go. <laughs> All right. Now, that was our quick tour, and we've added a insert a picture. Let's go back into our scenario and take a look here. We're going to, it says, open exam materials folder and open the Google Doc, titled Google Foo, and select the first slide in text and add a comment, needs more details. All right, now we're gonna get into where this thing really stands out. And this is the part, if you probably have done this with your classmates, if you're using this tool, I'm gonna highlight that first line. You see the little plus that popped up over here? I'm then going to say needs more detail. Now I've added a comment. Simple as that. And as you can see, it puts it on the screen right in line with wherever the text was. And it says who did it. Hello. Remember the thing about accountability? Now you can see it. Let's go back to con our uh, content again. Uh, it says select the first line. Uh, right within the same document, select the second line of text and add a direct comment to principal whatever his name is uh, with his Gmail. Okay. And stating, please add more information here. Okay. We can do that. So now I'm going to go into here. I'm going to add, seriously, anyone? My second comment. Need more information here. Now, how do I send this to him? Very simple. I'm going to then drop down and give myself a plus sign. When I've done that, it's basically going to look through all of my uh, Gmail that I have and show me who is available for me to send this to. Well, we're sending it to our wonderful makeup principal, GC, GCE Level 1 ADM. So I'm going to have to type that in, GCE Level 1 ADM at gmail.com. Unfortunately. Okay. And it says to assign it to him, I'm going to do that. So now that I've assigned that, what have I done? It's now going to turn that on. And it's going to give him access to it. Done. Okay, I've assigned it to him. And it shows that. Now, why would I do this? This is how I can talk directly back and forth to people in their um, Google Docs. And as you can see with the commenting feature, now I'm doing the commenting right now, but as you can see, these uh, comments would represent all the different people that would be working on this document together. Uh, don't let this throw you because uh, I think on the test, it does the same thing. It just shows you, um, you know, a little person head. You don't really get to see who all is. Uh, it doesn't does nice pictures and all that like it does us. All right, so that is how you do a comment. Wasn't that easy? You just basically type something in, highlight it, 
Uh, could I do it with this? Let's see. What would happen? Oh, look at that. I could come over here and I could type in, is this picture okay? Again, easy breezy. Next part we have to do. Open exam materials folder and open a Google Docs title, Google Foo and You. Use the Explorer tool to insert an image into the document. Thank you. We did that. Remember? We went in here and we put in a wonderful um, picture. And then it says, use Google Drive to insert word art into the document that says Google Foo. Pretty simple. You go up here to insert. You're going to come down to drawing. You're going to go to new. You're going to go to actions, word art. Type it in. What does it say? <laughs> Foo and you, something like that. Google Foo. Got it. Google Foo. Done. Save and close. This is, you know, about as easy as it gets, guys. Um, let's go back to here. You didn't put it in. I just realized that. Let's try that again, shall we? New. My bad. Word art. G O O G L E F O O O. Google Foo. There it is. And there it is. I forgot to click off of it. Okay, so there's our Google Foo. Uh, and you, you know about Word Art. I mean, you basically can highlight this, change it up, uh, do the color. Although that doesn't require you to do that on the test. Okay. And as you can see, let's go back and fix that. Looks all nasty on my screen. I forgot where I was putting my insertion point, so it dropped it right into my picture, Stephen. So I'm going to go to insert. I'm going to go to drawing. I'm going to go to new. Hey, we're getting good practice at it, aren't we? I'm going to go to actions. I'm going to do word art. I'm going to put in Google. I'm going to hit my return. It sees it. And it saves it where I had the insertion point that time. Sorry about that. All right, let's go back to our scenario. Open the exam folder. Open the Google Doc titled Google Foo and You. Create a header for the document. Include your name and the page number. Okay. That's easy. So let's go back over here. And we are going to insert a header and a footer. So I'm going to go header, and I'm going to put in my name. It did ask me to put in my name. <laughs> and I'm going to include page numbers. And do I want it to be in the header? Sure. Do I want it to start with one? Sure. There we go. That, my friends, is scenario number uh, two. How do we get this into the scenario so we know that we've done it? We come up here to share. Anyone with this link can comment. Do you want just to see it? You can do that. And then I'm going to copy the link. I will go back into our scenario number two. I'm going to click on the link for it. I'm going to come down here to where it has where we can write. I'm going to write my submission. I'm going to put it in. If you want to be fancy, you can highlight it again. Come here and click on the chain. Paste it in again. 
And now that is live. And I'm going to submit it. Let's go back and look. Um, there's a few questions in here we can uh, look at. So what sharing permission settings should a student use so that two other students can make changes to a Google Doc and their teacher can leave notes on it? Give two students edit rights and give the teacher comment rights. Give two students owner rights and give the teacher view rights. Give two students comment rights and the teacher's edit right. Give two students owner rights and give the teacher comment or edit right. Well, make sure you're paying attention to what they're asking for here. It's saying, so a student could have two students make changes to a Google Doc, but their teacher can only leave notes on it. So that would be A, students can edit and the teacher can comment. Who can make a copy of a Google Doc? Only editors and owners. What accessing docs in the mobile browser, which of the following is true? Now this one is kind of like I said, um, this is one of those where it's kind of get, trying to push back against this idea that none of this works. You can create multiple, the, the real answer is multiple people can edit a doc at the same time when using a mobile browser. That's the point they're trying to make. How many people can you have uh, email addresses with whom you can share a Google Doc? The max is 200. That is a number. What is displayed in a Google Docs revision history? This is a good one. This is a quite, by the way, these questions are right off the test. Um, the whole point of it is it's a timeline showing what, uh, when co collaborators have viewed, shared, or copied the document. Inserting an image includes several options, except all of the above are images, or all of the above are options. See what I mean about their questions? They can be a little tricky. You really have to read them. By the way, I put in a link right here. This is all of questions. No, this is not. Excuse me. Sorry. I'll show you that in a minute. This is flashcards that have to do with this particular part of what we've been working on. So if you need to have something, you can kind of go through um, and look at just to get yourself familiar with these are the questions, okay? And these are the answers. So I wanted you to have that available to you uh, so you can practice with the kind of multiple choice questions that you'll see on the test. Now, the thing I was talking about was that I have put in here for you um, the entire, and here it is. Here is the entire question bank. Now, as I told you, it's a lot of questions, but if you wanted to, you can click on that and that will allow you to download it and you could have it on your computer. So if you wanted to use it, as a resource uh, for when you take the test, you could have it on your computer ready to go. That is scenario number two. I wanna thank those of you who are following along and who have created. Uh, tomorrow, we will be looking at, tomorrow we kind of go out of order. And I'm sorry, I'm trying to follow the book as much as possible, uh, but, we're going to be talking about Google Forms tomorrow, one of my favorite, favorite things. Uh, and I think you're going to find this very informative. Uh, Google Forms is, it can get kind of deep, but at the same time, I also think that it is a really uh, overlooked tool for teachers. So I think you're going to enjoy when we go over the Google Forms. As always, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, you can reach me by texting me at 502-457-2937. Be safe. Take care of each other.